Welcome, Flip Clock fans. We're just going to spend a little time together in Flip Clock Fan Studio. With the main feature, we're going to be talking about this clock right here. I uh, just want to spend a little time with you to kind of explain what's been going on in Flip Clock Fan's world and um, see what you think about all that. Uh, first of all, the main thing I want to talk about is usually I take all these clocks that are and just move them out of the way, make it look like I got a nice clean workspace. But I have a lot of stuff going on here usually, and these are clocks that I've had out recently. I just don't feel like putting them up yet. Some of them aren't going to be on permanent display in Flip Clock Fan Studio, um, so they got to get put back in, in mini storage for a while. But I've left them out for a reason. I want to talk about that. What I'm doing is I'm doing shorts of these clocks. Now shorts are vertical videos; they last less than a minute. I'm not, I'm not sure what you think about those. You've probably seen one or two. It's just something that I'm doing to catalog the flip clocks that are in the, in the collection. And it's a, it's a good way to do that. Um, they're not that well received. I think some people like them. Uh, I get uh, a good number of thumbs downs on, on these things. Now that happens sometimes because they show up in people's feeds and they're like, I don't want to see this garbage. So you'll get a thumbs down so they don't see stuff like this anymore. But Hey, that's what it is. So these clocks are just kind of sitting out. Uh, I wanted to mention these two. These are going to show up um, in a short real soon. These are Ingram clocks, and I have a couple, a real couple, nice couple Ingrams. They don't, they don't uh, show up in in real good condition all the time. You got really good um, chrome here on this one. This is my favorite Ingram. These are American made, for better or worse. They they weren't that great of a clock. Uh, to be honest with you if you ever get one um, I really like this one. It's got kind of like a leather look. It's still got a warranty tag stuck onto it But if you ever get one of these and you're wondering how you get it apart That's for the mechanism and you have to release the tab here And the whole face comes off and then you're looking at this and you're thinking whoa just Like Mackie says just pull. Well, no, you're not going to just pull on this You're going to tear something up pretty seriously in here and um Make sure you're not energized when you're messing with these. You see right there is 120 volts if, if you had this clock on. Um, that's what makes these things handy if they're working. Uh, some people use these as what they call indicator lights to let you know a, a circuit is powered. Um, probably has saved me. But anyway, if you did want to get that off, you would take a pair of like needle, no needle nose pliers. I don't have any handy. Just you'd grab a hold of this. And hold it still preferably not with side cutters and then you would be able to pull this without damaging anything and then it's a little tricky to get this little doohickey out this is the alarm function so um, this is not a good uh, first flip clock for somebody if you're looking at a clock especially if you want one that you want to use uh, I'm all about collecting historical clocks and and clocks that were kind of pivotal and I don't know in a way, these were that. They were American attempts. I think before Americans, uh, United States, when I say America, I mean United States of America. Um, they said, look, the Japanese have got this handled. Uh, let's just use their stuff because we can't keep up with what they're doing. So, no offense, it's just the way it is. Anyway, this is what brought us here before I started getting off on a tangent there. Uh, try, just trying to explain why you're going to see some of these. This one's already been in a short. That one, the sunbeam in the back's been in a short. Um, that's what what I'm doing with that. I did want to thank the regular subscribers and the regular visitors who take the time to give me a thumbs up uh, and make a comment if you can. It, it means a lot to me. This small channel does not make a lot of money. Uh, you'd be surprised. In fact, we I don't really make money because with the software stuff I have to buy, and what not not even to mention the website that I run uh, I, it's a money losing proposition I don't know how to make money with it and I don't don't care to this is for a hobby and it's for helping people it's for because I like doing it and I've met a lot of really cool people all over the world doing this stuff um, so anyway, yeah someone on flipclockfans.com I'll give you a shout out there mention this clock um, and I saw that, and I thought, well, I have to have that, of course, because it's so unique. And what this is, is a clock for the blind. And you look at that, you say, okay, Mackie, why would you have a real gaudy-looking clock for someone who's blind? And 
Well, the thing about that is, is not all blindness is the same. Some people have total darkness, uh, blindness. Uh, some people have partially impaired. There's all kinds of blindness. That's where you get into the categories of legally blind. But a high con contrast clock, even with the light, a blind person uh, in certain conditions would be able to say, okay, there's my clock over there. They may not be able to read this at all, but they can tell, okay, here's where the numbers are. And they could put their hand inside because there is no uh, front piece and touch the Braille there. A little vibration inside the clock. I don't know if that's the motor. I think it is. That just started. So that motor's... Yeah, that's a little flywheel in there. And I've had to go in there and, and grease those. Now the thing about this clock... Yeah, I've had to go in there and fix that on another clock like this. This is one of those... Unfortunately, it's one of those Kentec mechanisms. So you can see... I have had to already go in there and replace these two. That the 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 um, hours was hanging in there. I cut it off. I said, you know, it's going to break. I know it's going to break. So I've replaced all three. And I actually think the tabs that I've chosen to use these as little zip tie ends actually look really good and work really well. So yeah, that little vibration in there is from the rotor in here in the motor and I can I fix one of those before just takes a little grease okay we had to break into the previous video I was just going to do a, run, a straight run through but I knew there'd be people interested in what might be causing that humming what you may what you may or may not have noticed is this clock can be set to either run for 50 hertz or 60 hertz, and that's very common in Japan. So clocks that were, you know were made to run in Japan are going to run at 100 volts. Everything runs at 100 volts. Half the country runs at 60 hertz, half at 50. And uh, so you know this was actually made for Jap Japan. But uh, you can run it in the United States without any problem. Now when you're doing that uh, 50 or 60 hertz, that's just kind of interesting. So um, let's see. Well, I don't need to know the gearing, but this is the switch. And if you flip it this way, you can see that the right here is where the motor impacts and turns. And if you switch it this way, this gear train is active. And if you switch it this way, this gear train is active. So that's that's how it does 50 or 60 hertz. It just switches the gear train. Now, so what I think the noise is, is here's the motor it's it's really simple you've got electromagnetic field here and then it acts on this little wheel this little wheel and sometimes and what i think's happened is over the years the grease has wore off of this now this this little part goes here right here to complete the motor and then that assembly goes in here with this impacting that gear train. And, and if you look here, you'll see there's been some grease on here and there's none in the hole. Maybe it just needs a little more grease there. The wheels seem to be moving okay. So um, I've used this stuff before. This, this is, you can use this in uh, food service applications as well but it's a it's a nice lubricant that's gonna uh, work to lubricate that post there because you can't you could oil it but really it's not gonna have any place to hold the oil so and then I'll put a little drop of grease in there that lubricant to see if that doesn't quiet that motor so again this will go back in here I'll go ahead and put get that lubricant pushed back into that hole See if that helps the vibration. I knew some people would ask me if I fixed it or what, what I did for that. So, there it is. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, but anyway, so there it is. A flip clock for the blind with Braille. I just think that is so unique to be able to reach in there. I don't know if it's functional. I'd probably not. I'd say a clock with hands would be much easier. You can't even tell the... 
the alarm you wouldn't be able to set the alarm you couldn't tell where it was at now this this alarm of course is horrible pretty rough see that sound stops when I turn it like this anyway we'll take a look at that later but I just wanted to show you that I thought that was really cool a braille flip clock I'd never seen or heard of one before and I thought well that's really cool I think I have to have that well thanks for sharing some time with me and like I said I'll see you in the shorts I hope uh, hope they don't bother you too much Thanks for taking the time.